Welcome to the Proton Pack is not a toy. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to put the padding on the back of an Alice frame. And as far as materials we're going to need for this project, we're going to need obviously the padding and the frame, but also some gaffer's tape, some sharp scissors, some black fabric paint, and a paintbrush. A sharp cutting tool, any kind of knife that you have, a ruler or any kind of straight edge that will work for you. And I'm also going to be using some regular painter's tape to mask off the ends. Here's the listing for the padding from the Ghostbusters fan shop. As you can see, for $4.99 each, you can get either the white version from Ghostbusters or the black one from Ghostbusters 2. It comes in lengths of 12 inches that you'll want to cut down to between 9 and 10 inches, and you'll have to cut the slit down the length of it. The white one will need to have the ends painted black, and both are wrapped in gaffer's tape. I'm working on two different Alice frames today, so I've got the Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 padding to go with each of those packs. I'd also like to show you the reference photos that I plan on using so from Ghostbusters, I have this photo of Ray on the rooftop. I have one of Egon in the hotel. There's one that shows a blank spot on the back where there is no tape. And then another one that's a close-up of the end cap of the foam. Ghostbusters 2, you can have three different versions and still be accurate. So the hero packs, I'm not convinced that they completely took off the padding that was white and replaced it with a black one, but that's what I'm gonna do with my pack. The padding that you'll see on those hero proton packs is going to have the same kind of look and be wrapped in the same kind of way as we see in the first Ghostbusters movie. But the other two versions as I'll show you, are going to be way different. So first off, let's look at the ones that are similar, if not the same, as the Ghostbusters 1 padding. We've got Ray in the courtroom. We've got Peter in the museum. And then the different one you'll see here with Egon in the courtroom. This is a semi-hero pack, and it has zip ties holding on the padding, which could be the foam insulation that a lot of people use on their packs. And then there's some more, some more pictures, including Ray and Winston. Again, you see the zip ties. And then here's another shot of Winston's pack with the zip ties. There's also some extra padding that was thrown on when they did the super straps for the Proton Packs and Ghostbusters too, and they added more padding to the neck roll as well. So you can see that in some of these pictures of the packs after production, and this is how a lot of the packs are being kept today. The first one I'm gonna be working on today is going to be the Ghostbusters 1 padding and LC1 frame, as you can see here. This is the one I do not have connected to a Proton Pack at the moment. My Ghostbusters 2 Pack is, is all built, and so it's going to be a little more tricky to get this one on there and wrapped correctly. So this one with the frame just available for me to turn any which way is going to be more helpful and easier. So we'll start with that one. The length of padding or foam that I got was a little over the 12 inches that they quoted me, so it's about 13 inches long. And you can kind of see the consistency of the inside there. And we're gonna cut a slit, like I said, down the length of it, and then also make it about 10 or 11 inches long. So let's look at the length at the top that we're gonna be covering and measure that up. So about from the edge of the curve here to the other side where it kind of curves, that's where your 10 inches are. 
So if you're a little bit inward of that, then that's still okay in the right length. So I'm gonna kind of shoot for that 10 inch mark. And then if I need to trim, if I don't get clean edges on the ends and I'm a little bit less than 10, then I'm still in a good area there. But masking tape, what I'm gonna do is kind of mask off a clean circle around the end and then make those cuts. I'm gonna to have to cut from both sides because both ends are kind of rough. This end not so much as this one. So we'll take that tape. I'm using masking tape or this painter's tape because I expect it to peel off of this padding easily without causing any damage to it. So, get that just about lined up. Obviously it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but that helps to not have your angle be all wonky. So, Got some sharp scissors here, and I'm just going to kind of go for it. This is the first time that I've used this material, so I'm learning as you are learning. So bear with me if I do something wrong. Feel free to call me out on the comments and correct me on that. Like I said, this is the first time I've used this material, and Being careful not to jump into it and tear things up too terribly to begin with. If I don't get the perfect clean cut the first time, then I will just go back in there and trim it up. Looks like I missed a little bit on my masking tape. about two inches wide and so it takes up a lot of the area in your scissors so you can't just go at it in one big chomp. It's not too bad. Alright, let's take the tape off. Easier said than done, right? So the tape comes off nice and clean. Might not be completely flat. Let's look at it a little bit more. I do have more of an angle going right here. I can see it now that the tape is off. Like we said, most of this is gonna be covered in tape and then painted over. And so a lot of the blemishes and the imperfections are gonna be hidden. So it's your build, take your time with it as much as you want, get it the way you want it to be. measure off about 10 inches here and wrap the other end and go for it again. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the slit down the length of it. So again I'm going to try to use the painter's tape. Just as a guide to kind of help me Keep it as straight of a line as possible here. 
if you want to be super accurate, I'm sure you can use more than just eyeballing it like I am. But I am going to use the X-Acto knife on this one. So hopefully give me a little bit cleaner cut and cleaner edge. I'm just going to score it to begin with. See how deep of a cut I can get that way. Might be enough just to draw the line there. And then just go at it with some scissors. Let's try that. Looks like we got a pretty clean cut. Got a little bit of a flap there from coming at a different angle. Just pop that off. This is part that's gonna be up against the pack and it'll be opened up. Let me get this here. It's gonna be angled toward the proton pack. So it's gonna be this way and it's going to be just enough to curl on there at the edge. So it doesn't actually bite down and cover the whole thing at the top. You should be able to not be like this where it fills the hole but where it actually comes off of the frame a little bit to where you can actually see daylight all the way down the tube there. And that's the way it mounts. At least the way the ones in the movie were. So that's what I'm going for. Now comes the part where we put some of the gaffer's tape on the padding. So this is the one I got, whoops, the one I got from Amazon. I got 23 yards, it's two inches wide. Never used gaffer's tape before, but they say it's a lot like duct tape, but it doesn't leave the sticky residue behind if you were to take it off, and it's used a lot in movie production. So I'm going to end up having rolls the on the ends like this but before I do that I have to do some lengthwise so uh, doesn't necessarily have to be the full length of the tube of the padding because it is going to get overlapped So I'm just going to take it right to the edge of my cut. And as that reference picture that I showed you earlier revealed that at least one of the packs had a blank spot where you could actually see this part of the padding. So. you want to replicate that, you can. I think for mine, I'm gonna go ahead and 
and cover up all the white on the outside. One more length ought to do it. I do like this tape. It's got a nice matte finish to it. Good look. What I decided I want to do is to cover the white just on the edge on the inside there. So I'm going to go on the outside and just fold it in. Smooth to the edge. I'm just going to open it up in the middle. I'm going to work my way out. Press down. All right, so that will hide some of that white opening. Then I'll trim this off and I'll do the opposite side as well. All right, so I was struggling to get it seated in there just the right way. So what I did was I measured exactly halfway and then I cut a little, a little T-shape in there so that there's room for the bar right here to fit. And then it curls right back around it. I'll take it off the table here so I stop shaking the camera. Spread that out on either side. And that's a lot more even and snug. And keeps it centered as well. So when I do tape on the ends, that's going to help me to keep it balanced. And it's taken me multiple attempts to kind of get it right. So I apologize for not doing this all on camera, but I do have it kind of where I want it to be, where I can still have clearance through that hole there. I'm trying to get it without as many um, parts where it's kinked up there, and then it stays where it's supposed to. So now I'm going to do the other side. All right, so now I've got both sides secured on there. Sorry the table there and now the next thing to do will be to put some paint on it so I went to Michael's and I got this fabric creation soft fabric ink paint so this is what I'll be applying to each of the ends
trying not to get any on the actual inner circle part of the white part of the tube. you can kind of see. And I do have some overlap of tape there. Once the paint's dry, then I'll trim it up real flush. There's a lot of little pits and holes in this material. I'm trying to fill in as many as I can. But you get the idea. So I'll flip it over and do the other side. So I've done painting on those two. Let those dry. And then I'll trim up the edge of the, the tape. But I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Got a little bit of overlap over here. We can see the white seam. But that's about the look I was going for. So the next one up will be the Ghostbusters 2 frame and stay tuned for that one before i take it off this is the current state of my ghostbusters 2 pack you can see the electrical tape that i had used wrapped around the pipe insulation and that's what i'm going to remove and replace it with this new padding okay for the ghostbusters 2 padding i went ahead and cut down to size, actually a little bit smaller than the other one, and cut the slit down the middle and that little T-shape there as well for the bar to go through. And hopefully I'll be able to put it on here without much trouble, but I'm thinking I might not have enough hands. So let me get this in place the bar. I think what I might do is just go ahead and try to do the lengthwise taping. If that's possible while it's halfway mounted on here. That way I can kind of get this middle part sealed up and do the end cap last. What I'm trying to do is just cover up that T-shape. And then go ahead and connect it to the opposite side here. And then I'm going to go over that with the long strips. Okay, so far, so I've got the lengthwise strips, and I'm about to put on the end caps going around. All right, now I got the end caps all taped up. Do have a little bit of a white line right here. Might either sharpie that off or tear it off a little bit earlier. Um, sharpie might be best to kind of go around these white edges because the white is on the inside of the tape. So that's a decision I'll have to make. But as far as that goes, I'm about done with the tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. And if you try this on your own, have some patience. Good luck and happy building.